Yo, how's it going everybody? You got Sketch here and welcome back to the channel. I recently spent some time on the X Defiant open beta this past week and considering I haven't played a Call of Duty game in a while, I was curious about this one after missing the closed beta a few months back. The hype around this one is kind of warranted since you've got XCOD developers in the mix, but it's interesting for a title that's going for that feel of the arcade shooter and mostly succeeding, it's still got some issues that will hopefully get ironed out by the time this releases later this summer. The game itself is actually pretty fun and with the game modes on offer, all of your standards were here like Escort, Domination, Occupy, and hotshot and such. Escort is the convoy push mode, Occupy is king of the hill or hardpoint, with hotshot being a variant on kill confirmed. Gameplay took a second to get used to, but once dialed in, it has that familiar feel of 360 PS3 era Call of Duty crossed with the hero shooter aesthetics of Overwatch. It's funny Ubisoft made a crossover shooter that is catching more buzz than both the Activision properties it's inspired by. The Netco gave me a fair bit of issues, but others have reported having few issues with the networking. I got booted from about a dozen or so matches in the five hours I logged and had moments where my control controller just stops letting me move. Turning the controller off and back on sometimes fixed this, but otherwise, it was a ticket to disconnect town. Restarting the app fixed the issue a few times, but if you're saucing another team only to get thrown back to the title screen, it can be a little discouraging. The connectivity during the beta test also leaves your jaw on the floor sometimes with bloom and bullets that somehow still hit you around corners. Much like back in the day, sometimes you'll dump full mags into OBS just to get one tapped in matches, and this also brought back some memories. Connection is favored over skill-based matchmaking lobbies here outside of rank play, but the netcode still needs some work before launch, though when it's working, it's pretty solid. The factions you get here are all from the universe of major Ubisoft IPs, like the Tom Clancy games featuring Splinter Cell, Ghost Recon, and The Division, along with Far Cry 6 and Watch Dogs, and this does affect the in-game announcers depending on which faction you're running. None of the factions felt cracked necessarily, but there are some ways is you can turn half or full squads with certain builds and you can cause problems in lobbies being an immovable force. East Faction had useful perks and ultimates so you can pick and choose how you want to go about each match or switch on the fly amongst the available 5 factions. Gunplay feels like OG COD and will immediately feel familiar to anyone that played shooters from that generation. Building loadouts with everything being unlocked during the beta test showed that there were some cracked builds with weapons and there was a bit of a meta with the ARs. Snipers in the right hands were basically one shot kills anywhere to the body and SMGs can shred, granted you can get close enough. There were certain weapons you saw in lobbies more than others, but for the most part, everything I tried was effective in most situations. Movement also feels like that of the Xbox and PS3 era shooters, and again the control should feel familiar to those that played FPS games during that phase. While you have the hero mechanics, the movement is simplified compared to current day shooters considering there's no leaning, mounting, peeing targets or items, or opening or closing doors. It's a straightforward and simple approach, and it's got a lot of potential within that simplicity. Scoring was a bit weird however, and it seemed to score kills above objective play majority of the time in objective game time. Types. I noticed that players that were putting up the highest scores were the ones getting the most kills and not necessarily playing the objectives. If the developers can find a middle ground and make that scoring a little bit more even, it'll be a step in the right direction. The fact the beta test had map voting along with lobbies that don't disband every match was also appreciated since those were the standards back in the day. The available maps were also pretty solid for the most part with three lane routes, some having a bit more verticality than others. The maps were pretty well designed with a lot of flank routes and power positions, and the overall aesthetic reminds me a lot of the DLC maps you'd see in Black Ops 1 and 2. Enemies stand out in most situations and they don't get lost in busy backgrounds often unless someone's running the cloak. Otherwise, enemy teams have outlines around them to quickly discern friend or foe. After playing this while the session was active, I'm down to see what they've got to offer once the game launches later this summer. It's got a decent skeleton underneath a fun gameplay loop that's got a good bit of variety, especially for a free-to-play title. Will this be the COD killer some are touting it out to be? I'm not sure, that's going to depend on who you ask. However, will it be some healthy competition to the big franchises currently out in the landscape? Probably. Compared to the full price tag of the latest Call of Duty or Battlefield, having a free and competent option that feels familiar could be a bargaining chip down the line. If they keep player feedback in the forefront and make improvements when and where needed, this can be a nice change of pace for PvP-centered FPS games. I plan on keeping an eye out for this one when it goes live, and recommend anyone that's interested in arcade-style FPS games to do the same, especially if you're feeling COD fatigue or just want to throw a new game in your multiplayer rotation. Once some of the issues get addressed and perhaps some things get rebalanced, this could really cause a stir in the PvP FPS job. And if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. If you find these videos helpful, that's awesome. I'm glad you use it as a resource. Check back often. We'll have more reviews and commentaries come up in the near future. But until then, take it easy and stay safe out there. I'll see you on the next one.